So, we will discuss now productivity enhancements and what are the limitations. We all try to enhance the productivity of the spinning systems that people have developed. Now, if we try to increase the production rate of these technologies, what are the difficulties that we are going to face and what could be the ways to mitigate those difficulties. Machine manufacturers are always trying to enhance the productivity and we will see that in some technologies, we have almost reached a, a limit that is we have reached a, a plateau. A significant improvement in productivity may not be possible. Therefore, we need to know ki what are the real you know, difficulties that we will face with respect to the enhancement of productivity in the technologies that we have discussed till now. Now, the limitations that we face can be classified into two groups. One is limitations of twisting and the limitations related to draft and fiber transport. So, we will take them up one by one. First, let us look at the twisting potentials of different technologies. Ring spinning, we all know that the spindle speed of a ring spinning machine can lie between 15 to 25,000 rpm. That is twisting potential is at the most 25,000, 25,000. Beyond that is really very difficult and we cannot, we do not foresee a significant rise in productivity in terms of spindle speed on ring spinning system. Why we will be discussing them? For rat spinning, the spindle speed is around 25,000 to 35,000. See, productivity is proportional to the twisting rate, and therefore, the twisting potentials values have been quoted. We are not really giving the values in terms of meters per minute, it is the twisting rate that is directly proportional to the production rate and hence the twisting rate or twisting potential values are quoted here. Rotor spinning, the typical range of speeds is 80,000 to 120,000 rpm. Friction spinning is between 200,000 to 300,000. Air jet spinning, it could be 150,000 to 250,000 where the speed of the twisting unit. Friction spinning, it is 200,000 to 300,000, this is getting repeated. Vortex spinning is 250,000 to 400,000. So, these are the twisting potential. Now, the limitations could be because of the how much, how fast twist we can impart and the other limitation could be limitation because of draft and fiber transport. Like ring spinning, it is written that the limitation is mainly because of twisting rate. 
but from the draft and fiber transport point of view there is no limitations. So, we will now discuss about these limitations uh, in the next slide that why for ring spinning the limitation is because of the imparting twist. For wrap spinning it is because of twisting rate, but not because of draft and fiber transport. For rotor spinning it is also because of twisting rate, draft and fiber transport limitations as partly. Friction spinning, twisting rate there is still no limitations, but draft and fiber transport there is a limitations. Air jet spinning, imparting twist there is no limitation, but draft and fiber transport limitations are there. So, and for vortex spinning there is limitations from the point of view of there is no limitation from the point of view of twist thing rate, but there is a limitation from the point of view of draft and fiber transport. Now, the results are given here we are going to find out the reasons. So, let us go first to the ring spinning machine. Now, we are all familiar with the ring spinning process. It is one of the oldest process, but the most versatile machine is the ring spinning machine. As I have already told it can process all types of fibers and it can produce a wide range of counts. Now, fiber supply from roving to yarn is such that each fiber remains in close contact with many other neighboring fibers in ring spinning. Spinning bobbin has to be rotated for inserting twist here. So, it is the spinning bobbin that we have to rotate and to rotate spinning bobbin we have to rotate the spindle and also we have to rotate the traveler. Now, small ring bobbins produced needs rewinding to make, make big packages. This is one additional no, constraint that we have. We cannot produce very big ring bobbins. The cops are quite small in size. It hardly contains at the most 150 gram of yarn, 100 to 150 mostly. If we go for fine count, it may be still less. So, the package size is very small and people have been trying to increase the size of the package, but there are difficulties in increasing the size of the package and what are those difficulties? If we want to increase the size of the package, we have to produce a big balloon. So, the bigger the balloon, more is the spinning tension. So, there will be breakage to the yarns. So, frequency of end breaks will go up and therefore, we will not be able to run the machine at a higher speed. So, we have to compromise. If you want to go for a bigger package, you have to reduce speed. If we reduce speed, our productivity is going to suffer and therefore, there is no solution. So, it will be at the cost of reducing productivity that we have to, we can only go for a big package. The other limitation in ring spinning is that traveler speed. The tiny traveler which runs on the ring, the maximum speed that is attainable is around 35 to 40 meters per second. If we try to go for higher speed, the traveler will burn very quickly and we have to replace travelers. So, replacement of traveler is a very lengthy operations and we have to stop the machines, remove all the burnt out travelers, replace them. So, if it is done very frequently, then lot of production time is lost. 
Therefore, the traveler speed is could be at the most 35 to 40 meters per second. And if we keep this speed in mind and if we know the size of the ring, which in turn depends on the size of the bobbin that we produce. So, we can find out what should be the rotational speed of the traveler. From the rotational speed of the traveler, we can say what could be the speed of the spindle. So, speed of the spindle is limited because the traveler cannot be done more than 35 to 40 meters per second. So, the traveler burning rate or traveler life is also a constant in the case of brain spinning as far as the productivity enhancement is concerned. So, for a given traveler speed a decrease in ring diameter can increase spindle speed linearly and reduce specific energy requirement. So, that has been tried. So, with some design modifications of the spinning zone or you can say spinning geometry, some increase in speed in the spindle has been possible. The other thing is the moment we go for smaller you know, size package in order to raise the speed, what we need is automatic doffing and transportation of bobbin to the winder that also is a tux that used to be performed manually earlier, but nowadays this is mostly done by automations that is the cops are lifted by uh, automatically by some machines and these tops are then transported from ring spinning machine to the winding machines. So, the automation was required because of the labor cost or going up and up at the same time the, uh, the doffing time was getting reduced because of enhancement of spindle speed. See earlier even you know, the spindle speed used to be around 18,000 rpm. Before that it was limited to only 15, 16,000 rpm. So, with time on improvement the spindle speed is going up and it has gone to a level of 25,000 or 22,000 around that. But since we have gone from 15, 16,000 to almost 25,000 nowadays the filling up time of the cob got reduced and hence frequency of doff increased and that would mean more loss of productions and if it is done manually and you need to have more number of operators and laborers to do the job and therefore, the machine manufacturers you know, decided that uh, we need to go for automatic doffing and transportation of bobbins from the ring spinning machine to the winder. Spindle speed as I have said the maximum spindle speed which is attained by this machine is around 22,000 to 25,000, but it is not that all types of yarns or all types of counts can be spun at such a high speed. If you go for very fine count, even a speed of 22,000 will be very, very you now will be practically impossible to achieve because the moment we go for fine counts, the absolute strength of the yarn goes down. So, we have to run the machine at a lower speed. So, the maximum speed which is attainable for 30s count and the maximum speed attainable for 60s or 18s count are not same. Even maybe 18,000 rpm is quite high when you are trying to spin 60, 60 or 80s count yarn. Whereas, if we try to spin 25 or 30s count yarn, we may go up to a speed of 
22,000 or 25,000. So speed attainable also is a function of the count of yarn that you are going to spin. So what is high speed for medium count range is not necessarily same for fine count range. Therefore, if we look at this, we can say that further increase in speed of the spindle or twisting rate is almost uh, is very difficult because of the constraints that we have. At the same time, the spindle will consume a lot of energy. The spindle is quite heavy and if we want to turn it at higher and higher speed, the energy consumption also goes up. So there are quite a few problems that we face when we try to raise the productivity of the ring spinning machines. One is the traveler burning becomes very quick. The other thing is the energy consumption also, that also is the problem. And the third is the end breakage rate, the end breakage rate also will go up. And therefore, we say that, that the raising productivity on ring spinning machine is actually limited by the twisting rate or twist insertion mechanism that is we have the spindle and the ring and the traveler. Now we go to rotor spinning. In rotor spinning, twist insertion is done by the rotor. The rotor is the twisting unit. So twist insertion limit is therefore dependent on the rotor speed. Now what happens when you try to go for higher speed? The tension in the yarn just before the yarn is deflected by the doffing tube can be given by this equation which has been stated by some researchers. So if you look at the spinning tension value, it is a function of for a given yarn, it is a function of omega, omega is the angular velocity of yarn within the rotor, so this is omega. R is the rotor radius and N is the rotor speed. So the yarn tension depends upon rotor speed for a given diameter of the rotor that is omega which is 2 pi n where n is the speed of the rotor in rpm. Hence if we try to go for higher and higher speed the p value is going to rise p is proportional to omega square. So p will rise at a very fast rate as you go for higher values of omega and as a result what will happen? The specific tensions for a practical mill operation in the yarn lies in between 1.5 to 2 that is it should be less than this, this value. Now for a one can calculate using that equation, ki what should be the, the allowable you know, rotor speed if we use a rotor of 40 mm and for a given count of yarn, we can choose some count value maybe 20 is any or maybe 60 is any and work it out. It will give a value of n which will be between 80,000 to 100,000 rpm. That means if I try to surpass the speed of 100,000 100, rpm, the spinning tension is going to be more than 1.5 or 2.0 centinewton per tex and hence 
the breakage frequency is going to be very, very high and therefore, practical spinning will be almost impossible. Free frequently there will be breakage. So, increase in productivity in the case of rotor spinning is limited by rotor speed. Because the increase in rotor speed will immediately increase the spinning tension. Rotor speed and the spinning tensions are related by the equation that was shown in the previous slide. So, it is a spinning tension has a threshold value and we cannot in go beyond that value. If we try to go, we will encounter many, many breaks. Therefore, what people have done to solve this problem that if you go for higher rotor speed, well the higher rotor speed is connected to productivity. More rotor speed means more production, but more rotor speed means more tension. But if I want to go for higher speed, keeping tension at the same level, then the choice that we have with us is to reduce the rotor diameter. Now, how far you can go in reducing rotor diameter? There is a limit there also because the rotor diameter is connected to fiber length. For a given fiber, there is an optimum diameter. Below that diameter, if we want to go, lot of rapid fibers will be generated and yarn will be weak within the rotor and it will also start breaking. So, if we try to go for higher speed at a lesser rotor diameter, there is a every, possi every possibility that the yarn is going to break again, even though the tension may not increase, because now we will be generating more and more rapid fibers and therefore, there will be less and less core fibers and hence the yarn is going to be weak and break frequently. So, this is the no. Uh, the, the problem that you are going to face. So, it is limited by the rotor speed. Next, we go to wrap spinning. The wrap spinning is similar to ring spinning. So, twist is dependent on spindle speed and delivery rate like ring spinning. Wrapping twist level is similar to twist in ring spinning. However, there is no traveler in wrap spinning and there is no balloon. So, balloon speed restriction and traveler burning problems are not there in the case of wrap spinning because they do not exist. Energy requirement has same limiting influence but energy requirement obviously will go up as you go for higher speed in the case of brass spinning. The spindle is there, on the spindle there is a package, that package contains the filament yarn. So, for the higher speed if we go, the energy requirement will go up disproportionately. So, actual speed is higher even then than ring spinning slightly higher. We all know that the spinning the speed can go up to 30,000 to 35,000 rpm. Uh, ring spinning it is limited to maximum 25,000 rpm. So, it is little higher because filament package is smaller in size, filament couch is much finer than yarn, this small package can hold lot of yarns and filament package is enclosed which reduces air drag, air drag is also not there. Because of these reasons, the speed, the spindle speed has gone up in comparison to ring spinning. The spindle speed is greater in the range of 25,000 to 35,000 rpm.
the higher speed is restricted therefore, is by twist insertion rate is mainly from the consideration of energy. Energy consumption is going to increase see with the spindle speed increase productivity will increase linearly. If we plot spindle speed and productivity it may go up linearly, but energy will go up like this. So, productivity and this side we suppose we write energy. So, this is for the energy and this line is for the productivity. So, this will goes up very fast where this will increase linearly with speed. So, beyond a certain spindle speed the energy consumption per kg of yarn production is going to increase and therefore, it is not going to be economical. So, that is the issue that we will face if we go for higher productivity in case of wrap spin. So, if we can design a spindle, so that energy consumption does not increase much, but still it allows us to go for higher speed that could be the solution. Now, we go to air jet spinning. In air jet spinning instead of true twist, force twist is imparted by a rotating vortex generated within the nozzle by compressed air. We have already learned this in air jet spinning how a rotating vortex is generated or created by forcing air to enter the nozzle house at a quite high pressure. Now, speed of the air as it enters the nozzle is equal to the speed of sound. Therefore, vortex rotational speed is going to be this n is going to be v by pi d where v is the velocity of sound and d is the nozzle diameter. And we can find out if we put some values that the value of velocity of sound is 300 meters per second and d if we choose to be a value of around 3, 3 millimeter then the value of the n is going to be almost this. Two million or twenty lakh. So that is the speed at which the vortex is rotating within the nozzle. The compressed air enters the nozzle at an angle, and therefore the yarn within the nozzle takes a spiral form and rotates. So, the yarn within the nozzle house is actually also rotating, but it is in the form of a spiral and the accelerating speed is the air vortex, but the decelerating force is the friction of the yarn spiral against the nozzle wall. It is only 3 millimeter and the yarn is following a spiral path and rotating. So, it is coming into contact of the inner wall of the of the nozzle and the friction between the yarn and the wall is trying to decelerate it, but the air vortex because of this the air vortex is trying to accelerate also. So, the rotational speed of the spiral has been shown by Stalder to be like this that is he has developed an empirical equation that shows 
n square root over n count in x is constant. The reference is given here. Therefore, n is k is the constant by 4 square root uh, n count in x or we can write like this k by n count to the power 1 upon 4. This is the speed of the vortex. So, if the count of the yarn is becomes finer, it will attain the higher speed than a coarser yarn count, because the numerator remains same, but the denominator will go down as the yarn count becomes fine. And remember the count expression or count units is text. So, find out the count lower with the value and here spiral speed has been shown to be around 150,000 to 250,000 whereas, the vortex speed is 20 million. That means, the entire vortex speed is not being utilized in rotating the yarn. So, since speed of the yarn is slower than the speed of the vortex, further speed increase is therefore possible. Hence, it is not limited by twist insertion rate. Actually, there is a lot of slippage which is happening. So, if we can avoid slippage, the speed of the yarn spiral can be further increased. because the vortex is rotating at a much, much faster rate than the yarn within the nozzle. In friction spinning, friction drum is the source of the twist insertion to the yarn tail and speed of the yarn tail can be given by this equation n theoretical is d by small d y into n d, d, d y and n d these are given here. As a typical case, if I choose a drum diameter of 45 mm and a yarn diameter of 1 mm and choose a dump speed of 5000, it can give you a rotational speed of the tail which will be 225,000 that is the possible speed of the yarn tail. The rotational speed will increase with count because if the count is finite, the diameter value, this diameter value will go down as the count becomes finite and therefore, the tail speed is going to increase rotational speed is going to increase. So, if the yarn count is changed, the yarn tail speed will automatically increase or decrease. If I change the count, if I make it coarser, the speed of the yarn tail is going to reduce because d y is going to small d y is going to increase. If I go for fine count, small d y is going to be less and therefore, speed of the yarn tail will increase. So, the speed of the tail and rotational speed of the tail is actually inserting twist. So, rotational speed of the tail will automatically change with the change in count. There is no need to do anything else. Hence, there is no need to adjust the production speed in order to change the twist value. Otherwise, in normal circumstances, suppose in the case of ring spinning, if we want to go for fine count yarn, keeping the twist multiplier same, what we need to do? 
if the twist multiplier remains same and we are going towards fine count, we need more twist in the yarn. Because if you remember twist per inch is k root over n e, where k is the twist factor. So, the twist factor remains same and if I go for higher value of n e that is we going for finer yarn in any term the value is going to be more T p i is going to increase. And if I want more T p i in the yarn we have to set the machine accordingly. Now, if the spindle speed remains same the delivery rate still remains same then this T p i is not going to change, but if we have to go for higher T p i then we have two options with us either we reduce the delivery rate or we increase the spindle speed when you go towards fine count. Out of these two choices spindle speed is not normally changed what we change is the delivery rate. So, delivery rate had to be reduced in order to insert more twist into the yarn when we are going from coarser to finer count. That means, we are losing in terms of productivity because we are reducing the uh, delivery rate. This is something which is not required in the case of friction spinning. Delivery rate remains same, but the speed of the yarn tail is going to increase because diameter has reduced. So, that is the you know, uh, important aspect about this friction spinning. So, production rate remains fairly same over a wide range of count there is no need to change it even if we go from coarse to fine count. So, for a wide range of count the production speed therefore, remains constant in friction spinning. However, the actual twist insertion rate is much less due to slippage and the slippage could be to the order of sometimes it can go up to 80 percent, 50 percent is very common. So, even if we expect the yarn tail to rotate at suppose 200,000 rpm, it should actually rotate at much less rpm. That means, there is a slippage. So, twist insertion efficiency if we say is actually low. So, the friction drum can actually you know impart more twist, but because of the slippage between the fibers and the drum surface the actual twist inserted is less. So, twist insertion efficiency is low. Therefore, twist insertion rate is a limiting factor in this case. If we can increase the twist insertion efficiency, if we can reduce the loss or slippage, the slippage rotational slippage of the yarn tail on the friction drum, then our twisting rate will go up and if it goes up it can increase the productivity. So, the limiting factor is twist insertion rate or you can say twist insertion efficiency in this case. So, that is all about twisting we have discussed. Now, we go to draft and fiber transport that is from the drafting point of view or fiber transportation point of view do you face any problem that puts limits on the enhancement of productivity. So, let us go to the very first one ring spinning, compact spinning, rash spinning they are basically all similar. So, they can be discussed together. Here the drafting system is same 3 row 3 over 3 drafting system with aprons. So, drafting speed in ring compact spinning is actually always low 
15 to 20 meters per minute. For raspinning, it can be little higher, it may be 25 meters per minute. So, speed is very, very low, and you compare it with air jet spinning or vortex spinning, which goes up to 200 meters per minute. So, 15 to 200, there is a jump in speed by 10 times, but the drafting system is still the same. On air jet spinning or vortex spinning, we also use the same 3 over 3 roller drafting system with a prongs. So, these roller drafting system with uptons can be run at 200 meters per minute or 220 meters per minute. However, in wind spinning, we run it at 15 to 20 meters per minute. Rasping spinning drafting speed is slightly more than ring spinning. Hence, drafting and fiber transport is not a limitation for increasing productivity for ring spinning, compact spinning or rasp spinning, because actually the drafting system can be run at much faster rate, but we are forced to run it at a lower speed, because, because of what? Because the twisting unit cannot be run at a higher speed. And drafting speed and twisting element speed are connected by the twist that we need in the yarn, because ratio of these two will give you the twist density in the yarn. And hence, we cannot run at more than 15 to 20 meters per minute. even though technically it is possible to run the adapting system at higher speed. If we try to go from 15 20 to 50, the twist value will be so low that the yarn will not form at all, it will break then and there, because spindle speed has to increase proportionately. If that does not increase and we only increase the adapting speed, twist in the yarn will go down and down and down and it will be so low that the yarn will be so weak that we will not be able to make the yarn at all. Now, rotor spinning is little interesting in this case. In rotor spinning, an increase in productivity means higher throughput rate. It is true for all spinning system. If we want to increase productivity means throughput rate is going to increase. During its journey from feed sliver to the yarn del withdrawal, the fiber velocity keeps changing. In rotor spinning, the velocity of the fiber from the feed point of feed point that is where the sliver is being fed to the point where the yarn is withdrawn, the fibers is always in a flowing state. and the velocity of the fiber keeps on increasing. The velocity profile of the fiber in spinning was discussed when we actually you know, discussed rotor spinning in details. The velocity increases continuously from feed point to its arrival in the rotor and thereafter it decreases drastically when you form the yarn and then take out the yarn from the rotor then there is a sudden decrease, sudden huge fall in the velocity, but it does not fall to 0. It falls depending upon at what rate I am withdrawing the yarn, which could be 80 or 100 meters per minute. So, the velocity at different stages are different for the fibers. So, you look at this. First, the sliver is fed at a slow speed by the feed roller. So, velocity of fiber is equal to the velocity of the feed roller. 
which is very very low maybe 1.5 meters per minute or 1.2 or maximum 2 meters per minute not more than that. Surface speed of the opening roller can change within a limited range. Opening roller in the case of rotor spinning runs at around 7000, 8000 rpm or sometimes may go up to maximum 10000 rpm. But we cannot go for very high speed because this problem fibers will break. And if we cannot go for low speed also because lapping tendency will be there. It is not that to avoid you know, breakage I run the opening roller at a speed of 4000 rpm. That will also be dangerous because there will be lot of lapping of fibers on the opening roller surface. And therefore, within a limited range the opening roller speed can be changed. So, opening roller surface speed is therefore, gets limited by these two facts neither too high nor too low. In between within a certain range we can keep it. So, it is typically maybe 8000 rpm for cotton. Now, comes next from opening roller the fibers will be entering the transport channel. There within this, this transport channel also is known as fiber feed duct the air velocity is limited. Air will be flowing through that channel because it has to carry the fibers from the opening roller surface to the rotor. The fiber has to travel from opening roller surface to the rotor and it is the air which is actually carrying the fibers. Now, here if we want to go for high velocity, there will be significant increase in power consumptions. This you know the we generate negative pressure within the rotor chamber and because of that the air is sucked from the environment and it enters and it passes through the transport channel and from there it goes inside the rotor and then it is taken out from the rotor also. So, if I want to suppose I want to go for higher productivity the automatically means I have to feed more fibers and if I want to you know, make them travel at a higher speed and I have to go for higher velocity of air within the transport channel and that would mean very high power consumptions. An increase in productivity increases fiber mass flow rate. It is obvious this throughput is going to increase. So, I have more fibers will flow from, you know, from the feed point to the yarn formation point. That means, velocity of fiber and number of fibers in the cross section will remain constant throughout their journey from feed to delivery for a given production rate. This has to remain constant. If the velocity in some areas remains constant, the number of fibers in the flow cross section in these areas will increase directly in proportional to the increase in productivity. See, if we increase the fiber flow rate, that means I have to feed the sliver at a faster rate, uh, but because the particular speed has not changed, the number of fibers in the cross section of the flow over the opening roller surface is going to increase. And also in the transport channel, when the fibers are flowing, the number of fibers in the cross section of the flow is also going to increase. 
there we, are, we will not be able to maintain the same level of fibers in the cross section as it was earlier. The fibers have been found to flow in groups. Therefore, the moment we try to go for higher productivity, fiber will flow in groups or in the form of a tuft, especially through the transport channel, leading to deterioration of yarn quality. If the fibers are flowing in the form of groups or tufts, then it will land in the rotor in the form of a tuft and once they are you know, transformed into yarn, it may lead to generation of thick place or sometimes the twist transmission may not be efficient enough and the yarn formation may be interrupted. At the same time, if it is cotton, the dust flow rate also is going to increase. So, the rotor chamber will be filled with dust very quickly because flow rate has gone up. So, along with fibers, the dust flow rate also will go up. So, the groups within the rotor also will get filled up fast. So, these are the problems we will face and hence opening and fiber transport at least partly limits the productivity increase. The dust problem may not be there in the case of synthetic fibers, but the problem of opening and fiber transport will be there. So, it will partly limit the productivity increase. If we go to air jet spinning, we all know the delivery rollers of drafting system of in air jet spinning, they may run at a speed of 220 meters per minute or 200 meters per minute. Typically, these are the speeds. At such high speed, air flow caused by delivery rollers become very, very important. At a such a high speed, as the roller rotates, the air surrounding the roller also rotates and that has got an implications. Upstream the nip, the air flows along the nip away from the fibers, but downstream the nip, the air flows towards the axis of the material. These points I have discussed while we were discussing air drift spinning. So, the strength of the air current is going to increase as you go for higher and higher speed, higher delivery speed. This is going to disturb the, the fibers just behind the nip of the front pair of rollers and also after the nip of the front pair of rollers. And this disturbance is going to affect the arrangement of fibers in the yarn. That is, if the fibers will go out of control, especially when it is behind the nip, because that air current is going to deflect the fibers. And it will lead to what? One is unevenness and fly generations these problems will be there if we try to go for higher productivity. That is, if we want to go for from 222, let us say 250, 300 meters per minute. This disturbance proportional to the square of the surface speed of the drafting rollers. So, it is not linear, it is nonlinearly they are connected. So, there will be disproportionate increase in the, you know, in the disturbance. So, thus the possibility of increase in drafting speed further is limited. So, further speed increase of drafting in air jet spinning is very, very limited. Though the vortex are running at a very high speed. So, twisting potential is, is still there 
we can you know, twist at a still higher rate. But the, the, the ducting rollers cannot be run beyond the speed that we have attained nowadays which is 220 meters per minute in the case of air drift spinning. In the case of vortex spinning similar problem is there though the vortex spinning machines are running the delivery rate is around how much 350, 400 meters per minute. So, that much speed has been attained there in the case of vortex spinning because it is because in the vortex spinning there are more wrapper fibers which are wrapping the core part of the yarn, the yarn is little stronger in comparison to air drill spinning. Therefore, we could go for higher you know, uh, delivery rate there and the way the fibers there is little guidance given to the fibers in the case of vortex spinning. So, higher speed uh, delivery speed has been attained there and in case of friction spinning is there any problem with drafting opening of fiber is similar to rotor spinning the here also we have opening rollers and then also we have fiber transport. So, the problems for friction spinning and rotor spinning are exactly similar. Production rate being greater than rotor spinning, the opening of sliver and their transport are more serious here. At higher production speed due to increase in throughput rate, the yarn quality will deteriorate quickly. So, the opening and fiber transports are real limit factors in the case of friction spinning. So, friction spinning and rotor spinning are more or less similar sort of limitations are there and that is mostly related to fiber opening or separation of fibers. If we want to feed more fibers to separate them out, we have to raise the speed of the opening roller and that is going to damage the fibers, break the fibers. And then the problem of fiber transport through the transport channel will also be there. Ultimately, fibers has to be taken from the opening roller to the twisting point. Since that process transport is basically a unguided transport, it is only by air that fibers are going. So, fibers will move in the form of groups, similar problem will be there and with that this discussion on the limitations is, is, is almost over now. So, we have seen that this spinning technologies that the, the new spinning technologies are definitely you know uh, superior in many respect when it comes to productivity especially. Their productivities are much more in comparison to ring spinning. And uh, when you think of further raising the productivity, then the problems that we are going to face that we have discussed, so the problems may come from the point of view of the drafting of the fiber, transporting of the fibers to the twisting point or the twisting rate, twisting efficiency, the energy consumption in twisting the fibers. These are the issues that we have to tackle if we want to go for higher productivity in these technologies. Okay, with this we close today's discussion and thank you.